Hello and welcome back to Lucana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're taking a look at the top eight deck lists for the Win a Case event at Dark Sphere in London. And this is a special one for me because for the first time I get to showcase my list as I made top eight at this event, which uh, I was absolutely thrilled about. Um, you, some people may, uh, may be new to my channel. If so, um, the, the Cliff Notes version, I'm a full-time carer for my mum. I don't get to leave the house that often, uh, or at least not for anything that isn't going to the shops or, or, or whatever. Uh, for, to play Lorcan, I don't get to play as much in paper as I'd like. Um, chapter one, I managed to attend three weeks of league because I really wanted the scar pin. Um, season two, I was able to attend a sealed box event for Rise of the Floodborne and then one constructed event um, tournament, win a case tournament for Rise of the Floodborne, which was also a dark sphere. I completely choked that event, ran Ruby Amethyst, um, and yeah, I, I, I had a terrible, I, I completely choked, which was upsetting, but that's car games, that's the way it be, and I haven't got to play in paper since then, and that was like the first two or three weeks of Rise of the Floodborne being out, so I haven't actually played a paper tournament in three months, um, but I got to go along to this one, and yeah, I was absolutely thrilled to make it. I made it by the skin of my teeth, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but I'll talk a bit more about my run and my deck. I'll do that last and we'll go through all the other um, all the other top cut decks. I lost my top eight game. But yeah, I was thrilled to, uh, to make the cut. It was very reassuring. Got to spend some time with uh, a friend of mine, Harlan Sweet, who, um, if you are a Pixelborn player, you may have heard the name. They've been quite consistently top of the Pixelborn leaderboard for a lot of this season. Uh, met them at the um, Sealed Case event for, at the beginning of Into the Inklands uh, three or four weeks ago. And yeah, they attended this tournament and they also made top eight. And yeah, we, 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 we've met a couple of times now. He's a really good guy um, working with the 20 Law Pro team. Um, and the end of this video will, will, will end with my next interview as we talk to Harlan about his deck, his run, his thoughts on the meta and the work that him and the 20 Law Pro guys are doing, which I think is fantastic. So stay tuned at the end for a little interview. This event took place on the 16th and I, to my sins, I don't have an exact play account. It was about 35. Um, I, I, I haven't been able to suss out the exact amount of members. I managed to make sure I got all the deck lists, but I forgot to check um, how many players there actually were. And obviously I was playing as well. And then when I lost my top eight game, I had to rush off home. Um, if, I, if I do confirm the right amount of players, it'll be in the description, but it was around 35. So not the biggest pool ever, especially in, in comparison to the last couple of, event, of, of events that we've looked at. But I've covered, I've covered smaller events and England doesn't get many events in general. Um, so I always want to try and highlight the events they do when I can. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the top eight deck lists. And don't you forget that this channel is sponsored by Card Market. So check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. So starting off in first place, we have Teng. Uh, disclaimer, I don't actually know the exact placements for all of these top eight. I've, I lost my top eight game. It was late. I had a two hour journey home so I shot straight off um, but I know this was the winner and I, I've been able to work out a couple of the finishes just from process of elimination but there's one or two that I, I don't know who came second but most of the rest uh, I, I, I pretty much have figured out but yeah just full disclosure but yeah our winning deck was Ruby Sapphire Dime Control and Teng was actually the winner of Dark Sphere's last winner case event during Rise of the Floodborne. They were playing um, Steel Amber Flute Song at the time. So yeah, uh, that, uh, a, hell of a, a hell of an accomplishment. Two championships in a row, so a player to look out for. But yeah, they're playing Ruby, Sapphire, yes, those are the colours, uh, Dime Control to take an advantage of the lucky dime. Exert pay two, chosen character of yours gains law, uh, choose a character of yours and gain law equal to its law. So really good synergy with our Tamatoa, who gets extra lore depending on how many items are on the board. And just from playing him and questing him, we can recycle our items. Uh, a nice pool of items. Obviously, the four porps are cool for the drawing a card. And we're one of our best cards to work with Flavisham as a drawing machine. The two Fowies, uh, Maui's Fish Hook, which is such a diverse, strong card in the meta. Um, giving us extra strength when we need it to take out bigger bodies. With Maui, um, we play it for free. And with Maui, we want to hit every notable location, or every location, the most notable being McDuck Manor, which requires nine, or making ourselves evasive, either just to be annoying or take out opposing evasive. 
We've also got the four fishbone quill for accelerated ramp. So yeah, all these items uh, we can recycle with Tamato, and we can get some nice high numbers. We can get his lore up and then get big lore gains from Lucky Diamond, even if we're not uh, relying on Tamatoa. We've got Scar here with two lore, Gaston with three lore, Maleficent with two lore. So these, these are all going to help us just jump. We get the dime down and then on a following turn we play Gaston or Maleficent or Tamatoa or Scar. Then all being well, we're a ramp deck. We should hopefully also have the resources to immediately pay two ink, exert the dime and then get a law bump and then if they don't deal with your character on the board in their turn then in your turn you're not only questing but tilting a dime again and if you can get down multiple dimes then all's the better gaston obviously also being good for card draw helping us find the pieces that we need and yeah that three law is heavy and four four is respectable three copies of scar vicious cheat to seven cost un uninkable six five um rush and whenever he banishes a character in a challenge you can re-ready him so really helps to control boards and obviously the synergy that i've just mentioned uh we've got Madame, three counts of madame medusa here to take out a character with three strength or less which is a heck of a lot of important targets um the four maui obviously good board control and works with the hook flavish from the draw machine we've got three copies of grand martala just to be some more card draw that is what the deck is lacking the most um you find yourself after post turn three after a fishbone quill if you don't find Flavisham, you can find yourself really lacking in resources so these um these little draw cards from develop well develop your brain isn't a draw card but it's 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 th thinning and helping you find a piece and yeah gaston and grand martala is essentially card draw but with a little more choice built into it to hopefully get the piece you need four copies of queen of hearts for the early game because this deck has a really slow bad couple of early turns and against aggro it needs some sort of response so i like it and obviously maleficent dragon good lore bumper and destroy uh, banishing characters is strong develop your brain as i mentioned to find key pieces four copies of one jump ahead for that accelerated ramp four copies of be prepared and the four mcduck manor which is just big bulky demands an answer and if they don't have one it's just going to net you so much lore so yeah a deck that's been doing really well recently since since, um, since Dime came to mass attention, shall we say, and a fine, fine showing uh, on this day from Tang. So huge congratulations to them. Going on to our other Ruby Sapphire deck, we have Kevin, who I know at least made top four because I lost her. I lost to him in top eight. Uh, GG's my friend. Um, and I think they left a comment on a, one of my videos recently saying that they lost their top four game. So I'm pretty sure that's accurate. But Kevin, I know you watch my content. So if I'm wrong, feel free to confirm. Uh, but I know at least made top four and yeah, defeated me in top eight. Really, really nice guy. Um, I'm not going to say we had a good game. Because I barely gave the man a game. And he, 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 I lost 2-0, like, hard. And he, the first thing he said to me was, it's a shame because this, this matchup is normally pretty, pretty good. Um, but my man will attest to the fact that I just saw, I didn't see a single rabbit for two games. I think I saw one Maleficent game one. Um, and yeah, they were able to, they, they were playing the Montanui, which got them a lot of value with the Hey Hey. Um, and oh, and game one, they were able to play Flavisham. I think, I think they played Fushhook on three and Flavisham on four. I may be getting the sequence of when it went down right, but basically they were able to get a Flavisham down and on the turn they quested him to draw more cards and um, they were also able to have a fish hook either that turn or the next turn or previous turn, which they were able to make Flavisham evasive. And I didn't have an answer. I had I had the Maui. I, I even had other ways of dealing with the Flavisham. I think I had one character on board and a fox in hand. So I would have been able to, but the fish hook kept the Flavisham evasive for like two or three turns where I otherwise would have been able to deal with it. So they were able to just get so much card advantage and I wasn't able to draw. Um, but they were a good player. They absolutely knew what they were doing. Uh, 64 cards is a lot. Not going to lie. Um, I didn't see the Sumerian Talisman come up in the game that we had. Uh, but they were a good player. And we had a, like, the, we had a really nice chat. And I wish them nothing but the best. Um, but yeah, huge congratulations to Kevin. Um, and differences here that I need to point out. Yes, there's a few actually. Yeah, the three Hey Hey, as I mentioned, which can deny lore just from moving to locations. And we are running just one McDuck Manor and three Motonui to be a location target for Hey Hey. The um, Accidental Explorer, always considering the Coconut. And of course, it can just give you more ramp. Just one Queen of Hearts for early rush but we're also playing one copy of little rocket stitch that can serve a similar purpose to Corella de Ville for the evasive so we're seeing the two grand martala the two judy hops here which he was able like if, i think in game two I, I i all i was able to do turn three was play a spell book and then turns four or five all i was able to do was tap the spell book and then i think on their turn five or six they yeah their turn five because I, I would have been on the play 
game two. Um, and yeah, they were able to get down the hops and and take away the only the only thing that I had that may have resembled a catch up mechanic. Uh, but yeah, uh, absolutely respect it. The four Maui, two Tremaine in here, no no Madame Medusa from Kevin. Kevin, if you're watching, what what took you off the Madame Medusa, my friend? I'd love to hear it. Um, we got the one Scar, the one Hades in here. Good stout hearted Cinderella. I mean, you've got other stout hearted answers, but Hades is just good. We're seeing one Shield of Virtues. Yeah, yeah, higher item count, more in on locations, more of a toolbox variant, lots going on. Um, but they had a X and one record and um, yeah, good player. So again, huge congratulations to Kevin. We'll now look at the Sapphire Steel decks, of which there are two. Uh, one of them was piloted by Harlan, who we'll be talking to at the end of the video. And I know that he lost his top eight game. So I know that this person, this list, at least made top four. This could be the person that went through to top two, not certain, but at least made top four. So we've got Sapphire Steel. Um, again, I say this pretty much every time. I've, uh, a lot of players that I respect, I see regularly call this like best deck in format, but just you know, needs a, needs a perfect day. You, you like you you cannot you cannot misstep. Uh, but we're taking advantage of the one copy of Lucky Dime for all the reasons we highlighted earlier. We've got like great with Beast as well, meaning you can still get quest value and well law gains from get Beast without making him vulnerable. Um, works well with the Hades, which I've said I like the Let It Go, which we are seeing in this deck. One copy of the Let It Go. Uh, these are mostly answers to Stout Hearted Cinderella. Of course, they're going to be have uses in other games, uh, but it's one I think one of the main reasons the deck plays this really. Obviously let it go we can sing it but Hades is a body and can benefit from our dime we've got three captain hooks for some early control of the board four copies of Mr. Smee who of course will benefit from the captain but doesn't even need it hitting for three questing for three for two is big three copies of Mickey Mouse for the extra ramp four Flavisham for the draw four copies of Cogsworth one of the deck's key pieces Ward makes it really hard to remove um, another character that we can be gaining lore from from Lucky Dime without exerting and making him invulnerable and of course giving resist to all our characters is, is very um, important to maths and makes it, it makes it very annoying for opposing steel players in particular for tragic hero beast for hopefully the accelerated card draw but also be if you are a 7-5 beat stick there are worst things to be three copies of the powerhouse uh gaston intellectual powerhouse four copies of the big tink we've got the four develop your brain the three rise of the titans to deal with things like opposing mcduck manners the fishbone quills the lucky dimes um the queen's castle if we can't deal with that uh we are seeing one copy of smash in this list for a bit of a a, a cheaper and early earlier response things like ursa deceiver of alls docks arthurs or just extra maths you need alongside things like a tink ping or whatever to just to finish the job or a grab your swords to finish the job two copies of a long came zeus fantastic card takes out a lot of the meta and of course diverse with locations and we can sing it then let it go as i mentioned four copies of a whole new world for the hand refresh free grab your swords for the spread damage to the board and and yeah we've talked about all these items so yeah pretty tried and tested sapphire steel wheel deck at this point most versions look pre like pretty much this but there's slight deviations on let it go and hades either running none or both or one or the other um although to be fair we looked at a couple of lists the other day that were running it with like tamatoa and a bit more of an item package um but yeah this is the ver I, I, this is the version i've well besides let it go um i was on four hook um yeah and that was pretty uh, yeah and i wasn't running dime at the time but yeah this is similar to the list that i i trialed with um, sapphire steel wheel which i know feels strong so yeah congratulations to them and then in top eight as i mentioned we have harlan who we'll be talking to at the end so i won't go into too much detail uh but yeah they are opting for the extra captain hook they're not playing the let it go they're not playing the smash i forgot to mention that the previous list was 61 cards um harlan's just on 60 so yeah a couple of account differences but we'll talk to harlan about his run at the end but congratulations to him i have been rejoined by hades the cat he picks a spot like every week or two and that's his place and I feel like he's starting to, 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 to want to, this to be his spot. So you may have to get used to Hades uh, making appearances in a couple of videos. He may change his mind. He looks like he's about to leap away. We'll see. Nonetheless, moving on. We'll go through the first of our Ruby Amethyst control decks. Now, I don't know the final placements for any of these except my own because I, 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 I just made top eight. Um, but we, we'll start up with Andrew. I think I played Andrew in Swiss. If it wasn't Andrew, then it was another Ruby Amethyst list by Aaron, which we'll look at in a minute. It was one or the other, um, but that was my one loss in Swiss. I had three wins, two draws, one loss. Um, 
And yeah, my one actual loss in Swiss just got too owed was to Ruby Amethyst. I think it was Andrew, it could have been Aaron, uh, but nonetheless, to Ruby Amethyst controls. Yeah, we're running eight one drops, four Olaf, four Rafiki, two Goose Go for a bit more board pressure and some more draw. We've got the two talkative, talkative pucket, Puppet Pinocchio for the exerting, a couple of extra Maleficent for the draw, two Crabs to boost our characters to hit big bodies and hit big locations. We are running two copies of Stylish Surfer Mini, Aggressive Quester if they aren't able to answer her. And the problem with modern day Ruby Amethyst is it, it's all one questers. It's so slow. So, it, like, I've said a lot of for and against mini, but it does get you that little bit more juice that you sometimes need. We've got four goat, four rabbit, four Maui, two copies of Yzma, which I'm a big fan of, ran that myself, three copies of Madame Medusa, no Tremaines in here, two Maleficent, the one Dragon's Fire, we are running the three Teeth and Ambitions, good for aggro, um, also really good for the Amethyst Steel matchup for the Blue Fairy, because um, the Blue Fairy can be annoying. Yes, you've got Fish Hook, but... Quite often by then, they've already had a couple of draws off it. So it's nice to have the tea for that as well. Uh, four friends on the other side, four be prepared. One sorcerer spell book, which is so important in the mirror. Um, and the two Maui's fish hook, as I said. So yeah, pretty cookie cutter um, Ruby Amethyst list uh, as far as they go for modern results. So huge congratulations to Andrew. Next up, we've got Aaron. Again, it was either Andrew or Aaron that I lost to in Swiss. Um, but yeah, top eight. Could be top four, could be second, I'm not certain, but we've got Ruby Amethyst control this one with 61 cards. We're running the four one threes, two Olaf, two Mini, four Rafiki, the two Coups go. All of this looks pretty much the same as what we just looked at. Nearly all of it, except in this deck, we are running two copies of the Queen's Castle. So yeah, it's just one less Dragon's Fire and then the two Queen's Castle to bring it to 61, uh, which I think is fine. So yeah, congratulations to Aaron. And then the last one besides my own, we've got Yi, who I faced in Swiss. Um, probably my best game of the day. Really good player. Um, we had a pretty close long game one. Um, game two, that was the game where I was the most appreciative of the fact that I did run the Queen's Castle. Um, because it was looking fairly even. I think they had a tad more card count than me. But... I was able to throw down Queen's Castle and they didn't have a Maui for two turns to deal with it. Um, they had to just play a couple of characters and I was able to follow up with some board clear. I think one or two be prepared. I think just one and then a combination of Dragon's Fire and something else. Um, so yeah, I was able to stick down the Queen's Castle, make it stick for a couple of turns. And then we ended up going to to time um we had five turns left and on my um fifth turn i was able to get to 20 law and bring it to a draw um which obviously never feels great but i thought it was it, it was hard thought um hard fault really good player um very similar to the lists we've just looked at no queen's castle here the three teeth and ambitions this deck running the one dragon's fire which i, I stand by so much in modern ruby amethyst control uh but yeah a good deck and a fantastic player so congratulations to them and last but not least, we have myself with some good old-fashioned Ruby Amethyst control. Pretty standard stuff here. I went with a three crab. I wish this was the third Maleficent. If, if, if we're going to down, go down that road, I wish I had just played four Maleficent. Uh, I'm more convinced yet than ever that this needs to be maxed out, especially in the mirror, because you just need to be able to out-resource your opponent. Um, so, yeah, but at the very least... There were times where this, this I was really annoyed that this was a third crab and not a third Maleficent. So that is one change I would immediately make. I went with a three coups go. Realistically, two would have probably been fine. Um, I think two is probably what I would aim for for the future, for, for cuts and adaptions to this. Went with just the two Madame Medusa, which I thought was fine, personally. I didn't come up against much steel. So my run was... Round one, I was against um, Amethyst Steel Jafar, which I won 2-1. And to be fair, it was another game where Queen's Castle really came in use. Um, but the two Dragon's Fire really helped in that game as well. I've been sitting racking my brains trying to remember all the decks I fought. I can't remember them all. I know I beat, um, I beat a Jafar deck 2-1. I faced uh, one person who was running Steel Amber Songs where I, I won game one. And then game two went to time and we drew that second game. So I got the dub overall. Um, I, fought someone, I, I faced someone from Italy who I had a nice chat with who was running Ruby Sapphire. They were very upset to be playing against Ruby Amethyst Control. I think it was their third or fourth in a row, I remember them saying. Uh, but they were really nice. I was able to take that 2-1. 
And then there was one more deck that I drew against that I can't remember what I faced. Um, also drew against the Ruby Amethyst player that I just mentioned as we went through their list, the one that made top eight. And I lost against a Ruby Amethyst player that made top eight. So yeah, there's one deck there where I drew against them and I can't remember what they were playing. So yeah, some steel, and the Medusa did come in handy, especially in the steel and the um, songs matchup. But having drew two Dragon's Fire did the job a lot, to be honest. Um, Mally at three was fine. It could probably be two. Um, I'm not sure. Um, four friends, yeah, I would keep. I would probably want to go to two Spellbook. I, I ended up being glad I had the castles. I was, at one point I was running four. And then I talked to Zach Bivens about my deck the day before the um, tournament and we discussed it. And we came to the agreement that we would just go with the, that I would just go with two. Um, although I was the closer we got to the tournament, I was leaning more and more towards like, do you know what? I feel like just cutting these completely and just going to like a higher count of like maleficence. Um, but I decided to run them, and yeah, there were two games where they were really important, and not even for the card draw, just because they stuck and they got me the lore bump that I needed. Um, so I'm still in two minds about Queen's Castle, and I'm likely to test it a bit more at a two count, but I don't think I would go above the two. Um, Spellbook, I think I want to bring to two, and I'm also tempted to, I, I kind of want to get one Tremaine in here. I feel like it's good for the um, for the Sapphire decks, the Dime decks, because quite often they just play one character at a time. Um, they go Dime and the next turn they just go like Gaston and then Tilt the Dime. Um, they don't often have follow-up characters. Sometimes they will, but not usually. And I often found that like Tremaine would have been would have been good. So I, I do think I want to build, lean into a, another Tremaine. I, wanna, I want two more Maleficence. And I want another spell book. So that's four cards that I want to add, including two uninkables. Um, where would I find those spaces? One crab, one Kuzgo, definitely. And then I'm not sure what I'm doing to make room for two more uninkables. It's probably cut one Maleficent. Um, or I just keep it and I I, I, I don't go with the Tremaine. Because I think I'd rather have the second spell book than, than the Tremaine. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, so yeah, I, I made it by the skin of my teeth. Three wins, two draws, one loss. Um, but I was happy with the run. Um, I was I was mostly happy with the deck. I was really glad I ran the two Yzma. These put in a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it was just made, uh, great to make the top cut. This channel is also sponsored by Whatnot. If you're not already a Whatnot customer, you can sign up using my link in the description to get £10 off your first purchase. And that's it for the top eight deck lists for the Dark Sphere event. And as promised, we are joined by the Pixelborn head of the leaderboard. I don't know if still right now, currently, but at different I'm, points I'm in time, <laughs> we yeah. have Harlan. Welcome, my friend. We're going to talk about a load of things in this 20 to 30 minutes. But thank you so much for being here. My boy is repping the 20 Lord Pro t-shirt. We will get to talking all about that. And you can plug them and talk about the wonderful things that they're doing. But let's start off with the basics. What got you into TCGs in general? What is your history? And have you played any other card games? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm Harlan. Um, yeah, battling for top position right now on the Pixelborn leaderboard. And, yeah, I just I was hit by the Pokey Craze as a kid, you know, 90s. And just loved them since. Never really broke the mould into, you know, the top eights getting noticed and things like that. Um, but always getting good Pokemon scores and Hearthstone, always making Legend rank. And so, yeah, when Lorcana was announced, it was sort of, okay, this is going to be special and I can do something. I can get in on the ground floor and I can really make something. And we're making some good good progress on that, really. Absolutely. And what, like, what made you make that dive specifically into Lorcana? Is, is there a fandom to Disney involved or is it just you liked the mechanics? Or tell us, tell us a story there. Not, not at all of Disney. Uh, even, even at Dark Sphere, the, one of the players said, uh, "Your level of Disney knowledge is almost offensive because <laughs> I have such little knowledge." But um, it, yeah, it was just I was playing Pokemon, and it's that's so saturated. You know, fifteen hundred people turned to events and and such. And then Lorcana was announced, and I thought, "This, it's Disney. This is going to be big." And then I saw the gameplay, loved it. I loved the resource mechanic, you know, mm -hmm. of ink and cards. And I just jumped in, and I'm pretty much learning Disney through this game as well. No, that's um, great. Yeah. That's one of the things I've yeah. always said. Like, you know, it doesn't always have to be 
like, oh, I'm a massive Disney fan, so that's why I picked up Lorcana. Like, if anything, I think that's a big compliment to the game to say that, like, <laughs> I'm not hugely... It not, wasn't the Disney that brought me in. I'm just a fan of how it plays and the mechanics and all that. Mm. And if that, in turn, is making you see a couple of characters that you think, oh, they're cool, maybe I'll watch that film. Is there <laughs> one of those for you? Just, like, off-topic Treasure, slightly? Treasure Planet is the one Good I, I've answer. gone and watched. That's the only one from uh, yeah, and that one's been all right, yeah. And and, and you did so, watch it, you did watch it. Yeah, 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 that one has been yeah. It's a few characters in there. I like the look of. I thought this looks this looks good. So, yeah, 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 good choice. That that is a great film. Awesome. So let's take the time now to talk about Twenty Law Pro. That I know you're very. Um, if, for the sake of anyone that has never heard of Twenty Law Pro, <laughs> tell it to me like I'm seven. Tell us all yes, about it. Yeah. Um. So it, it's just it's. The collective group, it's the one-stop shop for competitive Lorcana. Um, I'd say we, we're not sort of just an online thing. We're in, entirely paper as well as the online um, deck list and everything like that. It, it mainly revolves around our Discord server, which is closing to 3,000. There might even be 3,000 members by the time this, this goes up. And uh, Yeah, just loads of deck lists, discussions. It's all healthy. It's all constructive. And where it came from really was when uh, sort of Lorcana was picking up, I knew... I knew the rounds because I'd been in Hearthstone, I'd been in Pokemon. I know we all have these environments. You sort of have Reddit pages, don't you, and such that have big discussions. And I said, we need one for this. And I want to be on the ground floor for that. I tried my best at a Reddit page, didn't take off. Um, but that came across some guys doing 20 lore and, and the people who made it were all from around the globe, mainly in America. But, you know, there's, there's, there's some from everywhere, really. Mm. And that's another thing that's made it amazing is all these players connected, you know, from different yeah, areas. Sure representation of like and hearing different points of view from what like, the meta looks like in different places that's awesome and what's the long-term goal for 20 law pro uh, i mean it, it's, the guys right now they're, they're casting for an event I in america so it, it should be just being the the go-to place for competitive play um we've got some ideas on coaching as well and in, in introducing that um we want to be covering as many events as we can do casting for that you know just basically being a bit of a glue for the competitive scene and that's, uh, right now we've been helping that quite a bit yeah a source for all things uh competitive Lorcana. no and I, mm. i'm part of the 20 law pro discord i've i've only met a couple of people obviously like you say you're from all, they're from everywhere um yeah. but obviously met yourself um for the first time along with pavel and Lorcana deck lists and uh Earl Meister, um look on deck list obviously also being a part of 20 law pro we met at the mm. um the uh uh, the the release with um uh, bo sealed box event looking for my words there the sealed box event for the release of into the inklands um and that was a lot of fun to get to like meet some more people in the community we had a nice weatherspoons breakfast uh, to start yeah, the yeah. day yeah we we that that was even things like that we got to bring everyone together and yeah, there's, yeah. there's ones that happen in america they do little meetups in houston and places and doesn't um, it make you excited for like the big events like when it comes to a worlds where everyone's oh, going to be yeah. in the same place at the same time like that's yeah, something and, to, and, to it's exciting it's very much and as we, i think we're going to cover as well we've got a event in poland coming up yeah and it's just great that you can pop in there and say who's there you know, should we meet up? Should we practice? And you can do all those things with 20 Law in the Discord. Yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah. Again, that's wonder of the internet and like the beauty of Discord and the server that's been made. It's a source for these people to come together while we can't do so geographically. And you mentioned Poland. I think that's a good segue where to go straight into that um, event coming up. What date is it? I can't remember off the top of my head. It will be on the sixth uh, of April. Sixth so of April. Month. Yeah. So like three three ish weeks away. Um, I did look at the possibility of potentially actually um going to this event but it, it's not going to be feasible in the time frame but um, it's more so because i'm saving myself and my resources and my funds and things like that for when we get the announcements of like the the like the, the official event like regionals and th things that are going to help us lead towards qualifying for worlds and things like that um but i know a few people are going a few big names in the community including yourself um for people that don't know much about that event what's what's going on yeah, so it's right now it's been labelled as the biggest event in Europe. It's um, it's going to be great. It's I think it is topping the one that was in Vienna with how many signups, and we're looking at over two hundred or two around two hundred right now, um, which is awesome. I mean, yeah, myself, I wanted to go. Is I've 
managed to have the time and grateful for that to go and do it mm. so i can get ready for the official circuit and yeah as it, we even talked about it before when we were doing rounds not just for dark sphere but for the set releases getting used to doing you know five six rounds of yeah because it gets clear it does doesn't it it yeah. does we had a lengthy conversation about this which i always say with a laugh and in jest as i always try to do but it, it is a truth the harsh truth i remember like because i was a hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh player from 15 to 18 uh, when I went up to so for a, 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 like not a huge stretch of time but for those three years I was all in like every weekend like yeah. and traveling everywhere and like it, I lived it um and I remember being able to do seven eight nine rounds of switch don't get me wrong it wasn't great but like I had the energy to do it and just the last couple of paper events I've done like the Rise of the Floodborne constructed event and even the two sealed box events I've done for Rise of the Floodborne and Into the Inklands which is only a few rounds but I'm just like oh on my back I'm feeling my age at this point the stamina needed but that being said the recent Dark Sphere event which was six rounds of Swiss I felt a lot better I was very pleased at the end of the day I was like yeah. okay I just need I'm just very out of practice like once I've done it a few times I'm sure it'll be It'll get easier. We, we, went, <laughs> we went into, we must have done seven best of threes then because we did the, the top cut as well, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, even so, it's it's those things you want to think about is am I going to get tired of playing this yeah. deck? X amount of rounds, am I going to start dropping? Because it, is it too engaging? Do I need to remember so many little micro decisions? And yeah. that's kind of why I wanted to do these events so I can get prepared for when the official circuit starts. And, you know, I know the lists I want to play. Um, I know what, what my limits are, you know, and I'm just going to be more prepared for it. Yeah, you're 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 going to have all like because for the big events, really, by and large, the winners are, are going to be the pilots that make the least mistakes with the best decks. <laughs> so yeah. if you get yourself used to playing a deck which is so punished by mistakes, then mm. that's going to get you better at piloting it in general and like have yeah. a, lo a better long term reward. But that's a really exciting event coming up. I wish I could go, but one day but i very much look forward to covering it so let's segue there into pixelborn which any like that I, I might have some viewers that wouldn't have heard your name because like there's not been massively like paper events yeah. that people would have heard of necessarily that you that you've topped but people that play a lot of pixelborn are probably a lot more likely to have seen your name if they like checking out that leaderboard <laughs> so run us through your success your history with pixelborn starting from season one yeah, yeah, like you say, um, in the UK we haven't had many paper no. events, so it's been, it's been pixelborn really. And yeah. um, in set one and set two, I was still sort of um, I was still humming and hawing about uh, p Pokemon. I was sort of in one foot in both TCGs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 I I did one of the big regionals here in Liverpool, and I, just after that I thought, no, nah, it's got to be, it's got to be um, uh, Lorcana. And I I went into set one, I didn't particularly do much well. I didn't even play much. Set two, you know, we got into GM, we started getting, you know, the name around a bit, and then it's reset again for set three. And the the idea was just to make top twenty five, mm -hmm. um, because in the law, uh, twenty law Discord, we sort of celebrate people who get a top twenty five, a little roll, and they get a little bit of clout, and, and that's nice to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So thought, there's I, nothing I thought... wrong with wanting a pat on the back. There is nothing <laughs> yeah. wrong with it like, at all. And I thought, you know, as a mod, I, I actually have to hand out the rolls. I, thought, I should probably try and get one of these, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just the top 25 will do me. It's and, like what I said to you the other day, and when I saw the top eight list, I was like, oh, thank God. And yeah, I, I sort of went in getting it, and um, I, I started battling it up. Um, for the first two weeks, it was an absolute slog, but you know, I managed to get yeah. my name up to, to third or so. Um, and then, of course, they've added a new hardcore mode, so people are trying that out as well. And But that's really recent, and you were already yeah. like super invested in... You'd spent so much time in the basic like ladder, right? I, I'm, I'm hoping to make my name in the best of three ladder next, next season. Uh, next mini, yeah. Yeah, ne yeah, next mini season, because they reset them yeah. every uh, month or so. But yeah, no, and, and now I'm just battling it up top um, with uh, someone. Um, so that's just... It's really good fun, and it does get your name out there. I'll admit, I haven't been message requested this much <laughs> and, <ask for> <laughs> deck lists and things and, and, and even i don't think i'm good enough to hand out deck lists but you know hey, like, asking, well, I, yeah, yeah yeah give your all you can do is give your opinion like you know I, mm. if you turn around and saying yes this is the best deck like there's a way of doing things but like hey if someone says like yo like i, I like the look at what you're doing you've got a good success rate have you got a deck you can recommend then yeah absolutely like the more people that spread their knowledge the more people try things and then ultimately we will get closer to the right answers 
Like yes, if we if we sure. try a little bit of everything. That's my that's my wacky theory anyway. <laughs> Amazing. So off the back of that, what's the most amount of Pixel Born games you've played in a twenty four hour period? In a twenty four, it was the um, the first two days. So that's, we're looking at like forty eight. Um, I think it was over a hundred. Uh, it was it's because I got my name into the top twenty five, but I knew if I went to sleep. Um, yeah yeah you had a bite like, it, 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 and you were you like would, if i don't would... if i don't finish this meal it's not gonna be here when i wake up yeah it, yeah <laughs> it, it was it was i know when i go to sleep because usually that's the the americans will get on and they'll climb and they'll knock you off the top 25 so i thought I'll, I'll make a dent in it so i can get a good night's sleep and not worry about it yeah i must have played so many games and um it's the best of one ladder you've got so many approaches to it you can just aggro it and hope because you'll play shorter games with probably less of a win rate but I realized that best thing is pick a list, master it, and just take your matchups, really. So I've, I've gone with Blue Steel. It's also what I brought to Dark Sphere as well. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving that list right now. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's the right way. I, I want to segue into that, but just to finish off on the Pixel Born specific, um, like, I think what is, uh, like, a nice stat to highlight is with Sapphire Steel, you you tested 50 games with and 50 games without one card. <laughs> to see how much of a difference it made. Tell us about yeah, that. I, I, so, yeah, I, I, I was running... It's, if, do I need spot removal? Do I need Hades? Because if they get a Cindy out, I, it's quite a hard matchup. It's, yeah, yeah. And, and we did that the same with Dime as well. So I've done this with more than one, by the way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I still managed to get around 70% win rate above. You know, it was dropping a little bit less without Hades. So we kept the Hades in. But um, this is the great thing about things like 20 Law. I, I, I can go and look, and we've got Sky, who's, uh, as right now, doing very well in Thea's event. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say, oh, wow, you know, and then even have a chat with him about why he's chosen certain cards. And, and now I'm going to integrate those cards into my list. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's just amazing for that. That's awesome. And yeah, so like the, the rest of the video, we've talked all about. Um the before you joined me of course i've gone through all the lists and and all that jazz we took a look at your sapphire steel list which will be on the screen again now for people watching so thoughts on the list were you were you happy with it uh changes you might consider having coming out of the event your thoughts yeah so, so the list I, I think is solid i think you could probably still take it to an event and do relatively well i mean i, I don't see why not it seems to have a little bit of everything. Uh, red blue is your worry because you're going to ramp whilst they ramp, and you don't even get the the ink advantage, which is a big thing with blue steel, is that you have ink, more ink than them, and you can keep wheeling. So they can have seven cards, but you have nine ink or whatever, and they'll yeah. have whatever. Um, the one thing I did notice is you, I did tech the lucky diamond for red purple. As did many um, of the decks that... Yeah. I thought I was on the cusp of some sort of meta thing and I realized everyone had come to the same conclusion, <laughs> um, which is great. But um, what I realized, and I think I assume some others as well as, is Lucky Dime's so good and it wins you the red purple so much, play yeah. more than one. Because, yeah, I, I was noticing that I was digging like crazy for it mm. when I could just play two and dig less. You know, That have was going to be one of my questions. It. Would you consider yeah. the second? Because like, again, the Sapphire Steel list that did well in tiers event, like I think one's playing one, but every other is playing two. There's one deck with oh, three. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. yeah. Yeah. It was just about finding the room, but um, it I puts in so I'm much like... work that like, yeah. you just want to see it. I've gone with three Rise of the Titans, but I think you can pull that back to two. That was that is the I cut that... in the in Skylar's list. I, I, I think Skylar's list, or the one that's most similar to yours. They are mm. minus one Rise of the Titans, plus one Lucky Dime. Yeah, I, I think then go down to. I think once you've learned how to play uh, Rise of the Titans a little bit better, because it's a bit I, locations are new. I'm a little bit scared, so it's nice to have three, um, because otherwise your answers are very sluggish. You know, you need to Zeus them, then you need to hit them, mm -hmm. and it's. And just it's the item removal cut. as well, for like for the opposing oh, yeah. quill, the spell book. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 such a versatile card, and for free ink, it's and it's inkable as well. It's just going to fit into most steel lists. What's your thoughts on locations overall? Like not just in Sapphire Steel, but like the, the I suppose the only real notable ones are Queen's Castle, and then you could kind of maybe uh, put an argument. I, yeah, to be honest, you're not even seeing RLS Legacy anymore. A little bit of Agrabah, but not really. It's it's all about the Queen's Castle and McDuck Manor, it's, really. Those those are have become, and it seems the big H HP and inkable is because 
if you draw McDuck Manor early in my list, I'll just talk about Blue Steel for a sec. If you draw it early on, you, you just ink it because you think this is a late game. This is yeah. sort of a nice cherry on the top of I'm winning the game. I'll play this. So here's another thing you have to deal with. Mm. Um, but if it wasn't inkable, you wouldn't play it. No. I think if it was, yeah. Um, that's probably why RLS Legacy got Isn't, cut. Eight health is yeah. nice, but it's it's just clunky. Um, with Red Purple, I mean, I, I not the best red purple player but i assumed i've seen quite a few lists that have cut all locations mm -hmm. because it seems as long as you can um deal with locations you can l work in this meta and they are just a bit win more cards sometimes aren't they yeah I mean, queen absolutely. Castle's lovely but you you're probably going to queen's castle when you're winning <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that that's the why i moved like i i was at four at one point and then i ended up playing two although before like the last minute i was considering just dropping to zero and like going to higher counts of things like maleficent mm -hmm. and something else but i was like no i've said i'm gonna play at least two see how it does and i'll be honest in the in my particular run, this won't always be the case, but in my run, there were two matches where I was really glad to have it. If nothing else, just to break the stalemate with RA so that they had to play a bit more offensively into me. Um, so I still like it, but I understand a lot more. Like at, at first, let's put it this way: if I wasn't seeing a Queen's Castle in list, I was like, surely this is just too good not to run, right? But yeah. with a bit more experience. Yeah, mm. it was the value of. I remember when I started, I did the four X gym, you know, four X Queen's Castle, two RLS Legacy, and you thought this is amazing because turn five, you know, I'm up a location, and, and then it's just clunky and it yeah. doesn't really work half is, the time, and it's so win more. And yeah, is this our biggest balance of a legendary being so overrated, such as Jim, and a legendary like Lucky Die being so underrated, at, at least initially? <laughs> It, it, it must be because it's got to be uh, the biggest yeah, swing. I, I I even remember us packing them in the sealed events, and we thought, oh god, another lucky dart. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I got like want, seven. I don't want to. Yeah, I've I've got three or four, and and now I'm actually grateful I've got them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Use them all. They've gone. Hey, they've gone up two pound on card market. Have they? Oh, oh check out card market where you trade and card game needs. <laughs> Little plug. <laughs> Mm, yeah. No, brilliant. Um, any notable games from your run? You lost. Well, you lost in your top eight game, unfortunately. What two? The mirror, right? Yeah, I lost those. So I had two losses. I mean, overall, if you round up five wins and two losses, I would just Good. be. I'm pretty. I mean, that's my first time using BS in uh like an actual paper event. I played it at locals, but this is the first yeah. time properly. So I'm just grateful to have made a cut, mm. you know, and and everything. And yeah, a, a red blue. It was just. That game was just a loss because out tempoed, got more ink than me. Uh, they got Tamato out, could keep putting in a lucky dime back. I was even trying to rise of Titans at um, a painful one. And then the uh, mirror, the, the man got played, absolutely lovely guy as well. Uh, mentioned that he played Blue Steel since set one, so I assumed he must have a bit more experience with it. But it's just who can get cogs down, and if you can get two cogs down, it's probably a win. You might as well just quit there. It was just painful. One one of the games I had to ink cogs because I had a whole new world and Gaston in hand, mm -hmm. and all I drew was the cogs, so that had to go in the ink well. And then I had to play a whole new world because I knew they were going to play a Cogsworth, so I could burn it right. and hope they wouldn't draw another one. But of course, they did draw another one, <laughs> and yeah, but it just didn't go your way in that particular no. that, that, in that particular game, as is the nature of card games. But as you say, still a, a great run, like and a great. As you say, a great test for a proper gauntlet. Like, yes, can this yeah, deck you can, get some miles on it? It, it? It's nice that I can now take the flight, bring the deck to Poland, and I'll, I'm feeling confident with mm. it. Yeah, just from an event uh, here that's not far from uh, where I live. No, yeah. that's, that's awesome. And I genuinely, I genuinely wish you the best of luck with the Poland event. Um, to round us off, are there any shout outs, thank yous, sort of any, uh, have your moment to uh, say anything you'd like to uh, the viewers? um no, no real shout outs i mean just get and rep in the 20 law so if anyone is after some more competitive knowledge please do check us out on discord. the discord will be linked um, below go check it out yeah and uh always to mention i do have a testing group and for anyone who's ever getting into competitive get on with a testing group that's always going to be great help try all your matches i mean you can play as much pixelborn as i do well you can try to <laughs> um, <but it's laughs> you can try testing and yeah, it's always down to testing and, you know, try all your matchups, play more of the worst matchups, you know, than the ones you auto win. So, yeah. And there we have it. A fantastic uh, chat with Harlan. Really nice guy. It was uh, really great to get to meet him a couple of times. Great player. And yeah, I think the 20 Lord Pro team are doing wonderful things for the community.
But yeah, that's it from me. Other than two quick things, um, one sponsorship related, one life related. Um, sponsorship related, I know I've already done the whatnot plug, but just a reminder um, that on the 1st of April, which at time of recording is 11 days away, uh, or 12, math is hard, uh, but less than two weeks at this point, um, anyone that has signed up to whatnot using my link and made a purchase is going to be entered into a draw to win a Lorcana Trove. So far, I have three people that have signed, well, to be fair, there's 10 people that have signed up with my link, uh, and I'm very thankful. But three people have gone as far as to make a purchase and been entered into the Winner Trove event. So first, firstly, thank you, to the, thank you to those people for supporting me, because once you once someone does make a purchase on whatnot, and don't forget you, temp, you get £10 off, um, that's when I receive a payment from whatnot, which obviously supports me. So thank you so much for that. And yeah, three people so far entered into the Trove um, giveaway. So if you want to um, do something about those odds, then get yourself involved and then a final little life thing um good news uh in three weeks me and uh, me and my mum are going to be moving home uh it's a good thing i'm not going to go into too much detail about this now i will at some point um but the place we've been living right now has been awful we are right out in the middle of nowhere um british viewers do you rem um if you're over a certain age do if you uh, if you're do you remember the vicar of dibley the opening sequence when it was going over all the fields that's a pretty good representation of where i live and if you're not from england just youtube vicar of dibley intro and you will see kind of the idea i'm right in the middle of nowhere it's really hard to do anything even though i'm restricted in being able to leave the house anyway because of my caring duties but it makes it even harder and not just for uh, for my own reasons but it's, it's not been good for my mum being here so we've actually been trying to move out of the, from this place for a year and a half um it's been a long old slog and yesterday, we finally got confirmation that uh, that we're moving somewhere much more appropriate. Um, so I'm very pleased about that. Um, so this is just an early warning that in around two and a half, three weeks time, um, I will disappear for a few days because the move is going to be, it's going to take a lot of work and then I need to get all set up at the other end um, and obviously I will do reminders of this as we get closer to that point uh, but I only just found out and it's good news so happy to share it um, and yeah just a pre-warning that in three weeks ish um, there will be there will be a break of a few days while I organize that house move but it's a positive thing and hopefully will lead me to lead towards me being able to play more Lorcana and make it easier to get out to events but nonetheless that is it from me for now thank you so much for watching if you brand new to the channel please subscribe for all things Orkana hit the like button to show your support and we'll see you soon